participate in the prayers and make them your own. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Our citizenship is in heaven and it is from there that we are expecting a saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We pray together. We do not, not presume, presume to come to your table, merciful Lord, Lord, trusting in our own righteousness but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather a crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, all that we need, that we may worship you and honour you with our lives. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
I get a little teary when I sing that one because that was my mum's favourite. Oh, beautiful. <coughs> Compassion and forgiveness belong to the Lord our God, though we have rebelled against him. So let us then renounce our willfulness mm. and ask his mercy by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Save your people, God of truth and mercy, from the chaos of divided loyalties and the worship of many gods. Save, Save us, God, God of truth and, and mercy. From making you in our own likeness and the slavery of self-centeredness. Save, Save us, God, God of truth and mercy. From using your name trivially and claiming you for our prejudices. Save us, God of truth and mercy. From neglecting sabbatical quiet times and being obsessed with busyness. Save us, God of truth and mercy. From ignoring or despising the elderly and overindulging the new generation. Save us, God of truth and mercy. From glorifying armaments and war and wishing our enemies dead. Save us, God of truth and mercy. From watering down love and marriage and the exploitation of sex. Save us, God of truth and mercy. From the legal robberies of the stock exchange and the cunning thefts of tax evasion. Save us, God of truth and mercy from TV programs that twist the facts and cruel gossip in supermarkets. Save us, God of truth and mercy. From those who preach greed as a virtue and possession lust which is never satisfied. Jesus Christ, Saviour of all who lose their way, healing spirit, power who renews the world, creator father, Save us, God, truth and mercy. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive you your sins and make you holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God of our ancestors, whose servant Abraham was given faith to obey your call and go out into the unknown, endow your church with such faith that we may follow you with courage for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be comfortable while we listen to Scripture. from the letter to the Philippians, Philippians, chapter 3, beginning at verse 17. Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me, and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I tell you, even with tears, their end is destruction, their God is the belly, and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, and it is from there that we are expecting a saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation, that it may be conformed to the body of his glory, by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, Stand firm in the Lord, in this way, my beloved. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke, chapter 13, beginning at verse 1. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. At that very time, there were some present who told him about the Gal Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. He asked them, do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will perish as they did. 
or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them? Do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No. I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found a bun. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied. So let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good, but if not, you can cut it down. For the Gospel of the Lord. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ. Come Holy Spirit, come and open our hearts and minds that we might hear the word that God is speaking to each and every one of us. That we might go from here as a light in the world by which you can draw others to yourself and with them build your kingdom of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be comfortable. I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember the name of the movie. It was it was Peter Sellers, I think. And uh, I think it was called The Gardener. And he was he was a simple man. You know, he he was a couple of sandwiches short of a picnic, really. And uh, kangaroo short of a top paddock. Although that's not the case nowadays. There's so many flipping kangaroos there. Um, anyway, he. Uh, because he was simple and he was a gardener, all he could talk about was in these metaphors around gardening. And so he kind of became this guru within the political sphere in the, in the USA, either to the president, I don't think he became president, but he was certainly, certainly became an advisor to the president of the United States. Because he'd be asking about, you know, what we need to do. And, and, and he would say things like, well, you need to prune in order for you to get better growth. <laughs> And those kinds of things. And so because he used to say all these sorts of things, which seemed so wise, he became his guru and stuff. If you ever find the movie, I, I recommend you watch it. Because there's something about that that's caught up in the gospel reading today. I, I'm not going to deal with the, the Tower of Siloam and, and, and those kinds of things. But, but this picture about Israel, which is in the image of the fig tree. The fig tree is often used as an image in scripture to represent Israel. And here is this picture in there of this man plants a fig tree and after three years, which is clearly not enough to allow a fig tree to bear fruit, but after three years he comes looking for fruit and there's none. And he says to his gardener, look, rip the thing out, it's wasting, it's wasting good soil, we can do something else with that, basically. And, and the, the gardener says, sir, let me dig around it a bit and dig some manure into it and uh, come back in another year. If there's nothing there, then we will rip it out then. And it's kind of this picture in there, I think, this, this metaphor in there of the, this idea that God is working on Israel in order for it to bear fruit. But what's, what's the story? This kind of the digging around in there. I don't know what that means to you, but sometimes this journey that, that we're on as Christians, sometimes God's digging around in our life and turning it all over and revealing things to us. And that's uncomfortable. But I'm kind of finding myself just reflecting on this idea about manure. And sometimes life is full of crap. And I'm just, I'm kind of thinking in some sense, it's that, it's that sense of, the crap stuff of life which enables us to grow so that we can bear fruit these times of difficulty these times of struggle and dare I say it these times of sacrifice we've been through a whole lot of stuff over the last two and a bit years now and we're, we're in this situation where we, we've discovered and learned things that we didn't know before 
possibly about ourselves, possibly about this world that we're living in, possibly about others and the way that they, they choose to behave and respond, all that kind of stuff, which is ask questions about ourselves and what we need to do. This invitation to be a people who are suffering. Then we've got this picture that comes up with Paul, and Paul talks about these members of the church being the enemies of the cross. And I'm wondering, I'm beginning to think what he might be meaning by this in terms of this whole issue of sacrifice. It's so easy for us to be Christians who, who want everything to be good and not willing to enter into that stuff which is crap into those things which are difficult, not willing to enter into the suffering, not willing to choose to suffer. And Paul, Paul talks about this, I think, in terms of being enemies of the cross. Why? Because the cross is about suffering. It's about God choosing to suffer. Choosing to suffer on our, for our behalf, for our benefit, even to death. And Paul knows this to be true and he's encouraging the church in Philippi to imitate him in this willingness to enter into that, that, that suffering, that newness that, that comes about. Just, just before this particular passage comes up, Paul talks about, he talks about his, uh, his own experience in terms of letting go of things, entering into the suffering of letting go. So this is from Philippians chapter 3. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrew, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under law, blameless. Yet, whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as lost because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as a loss because of the surpassing value of Christ Jesus, my Lord. Here Paul has made this shift from that which was what he knew. In his experience of meeting with the resurrected Jesus on the road to Damascus, to move into something new. What is he moving into? Well, I think he's moving into uh, into that which is what God intended from the very beginning. That he started with Abraham and called him out. There was no law there. There was no rules there. It was purely about relationship. Leave your father's land and house and go to the place that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation and you will be blessed to be a blessing. That's my paraphrase of it anyway. And what does he do? He goes. And somewhere along the line, things get really, really complicated. And people start hanging on to all those things which are about rules and laws and all that kind of stuff. And here we've got some people within the, within the church at Philippi who are harking back to that and holding on to those things that had become whether they're the Christian Pharisees, for want of a better word, those people are holding on to these are the rules, and Paul's describing them as enemies of the cross. Why? Because they're not willing to enter into the suffering of letting go of what needs to be let go of in order to take up what can be taken up to produce growth. They're not willing to allow God to dig around them and fertilize them. One of the difficulties that we've always got in this ministry and mission that we're on is that whole sense of, of, of renewing. And so here we've got, in Christ, we've got this renewal of, of Israel as what it's meant to be. Jesus brings about that transformation. And the invitation we're on is to ask those questions about what do we need to do to renew in order to produce growth and the fruit that God wants in us. Are we willing to enter into the sacrifice? Are we willing to enter into the suffering of letting go of those things that we need to let go of? So we're 
So we're talking about not, if we're not working on that process of renewal, then we're at risk too of being enemies of the cross. The Lord be with you. I invite you to stand with me as we together acknowledge Christ and affirm our faith in him. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a slave. He was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. <coughs>
God of our ancestors, from ancient times you have heard the cries of your people and answered when they call on you. Hear the prayers we bring today. God of Abraham, Sarah and Hagar, we pray for the peoples of the world, particularly for South Sudan, for Afghanistan and Pakistan, for the Ukraine and for Russia, for an, an end to bitterness and hostility between nations and within nations. God of our ancestors, Hear the prayers we bring today. God of Moses, Miriam and Aaron, we pray for all who are prophets, priests and poets to your people. For all who lead your people today from slavery to freedom. God of our ancestors, hear the prayers we bring today. God of Hannah and Samuel, we pray for all who turn to you for help in barren lives, for the poor and the downtrodden, for those who hear your voice and offer their lives to your service. God of our ancestors, hear the prayers we bring today. God of Deborah, David and Solomon, we pray for those who govern or administer the law, that they may have wisdom, insight and integrity, and without fear or favour seek the common good. God of our ancestors, hear the prayers we bring today. God of Naomi and Ruth, we pray for all in this community, for newcomers and strangers, for our First Peoples and for refugees and asylum seekers, for the hungry and the homeless, for our families and friends and all who are dear to us and all whom we struggle with. God of our ancestors, hear the prayers we bring today. God of Mary of Nazareth and of Martha of Bethany of Peter and of Paul, we pray for all who bring your love into the world, for all who confess Christ as Messiah. We pray for ourselves as a parish. In all that we do by word or deed or by sacrament, we proclaim your good news. God of our ancestors, hear the prayers we bring today. God of Lazarus and Mary of Magdala, we pray for all in the need of your healing touch. For those who are struggling with COVID and even for those who are experiencing long COVID. For those at these times have disturbed their mind and for those who are suffering from mental illness with all the things that are taking place in the world. For those who have become dispirited. For those who are grieving loved ones. For those on our hearts who are sick. For those that we don't know. And for those who are dying. God of our ancestors, hear the prayers we bring today. God of the saints and martyrs, we remember and give thanks for all who have followed you in faith. For all good and holy people, especially where they have given themselves sacrificially in life for you. May we, like them, lead faithful and fruitful lives and with all your saints come to dwell in the fullness of your eternal kingdom. God of our ancestors and our God, hear the prayers we bring today. 
God of our ancestors, accept our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Saviour, who taught us to pray. Our Father Amen. in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Would you stand with me if you are able? For being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Holy Spirit be upon us now to cleanse our hearts, hallow our gifts, and perfect the offering of ourselves for the love of Jesus Christ our Lord. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All glory and honour be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, who by the power of your Spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. He was tempted in every way as we are, yet he did not sin. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. By his grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to walk in the way of his love. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, ever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, in the highest. Blessed God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine. We pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them will be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, Take it. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Gracious God, you have gathered us together to remember all Christ has done for us. We recall the death of your Son, Jesus Christ. We proclaim his resurrection and ascension. And we look with expectation for his coming again. Renew us by your Holy Spirit. Unite us in the body of your Son and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing, Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours forever and ever. Amen. As this broken bread was once many grains, which have been gathered together and made one bread, so, so may your church, church be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, Lord I am not ready to receive you, and I only say the word, and I shall be healed. For the benefit of those who um, have been with us when we've been um, administering both kinds, um, we get the opportunity to, to dip the bread into the, into the wine and you know, so we can have it in both kinds that way. So come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ. The remembrance that he lived, died, and rose again for us, and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Our citizenship is in heaven, and it's from there that we are expecting the Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. Most merciful God, you have restored us to life by the triumphant death of Jesus, your Son. Continue his healing work within us, that all who partake in this communion may give themselves wholly to your service. Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work for your praise and glory. Amen. Is there anything that we need to know about? I've got nothing to tell you either. So there you go. Lovely to see you both. Sorry. Sorry for what you've been through. Yeah. Yeah. So looking forward to your healing soon. Mm -hmm. Invite you to stand for the blessing. Christ our Saviour draw you to himself, that you may find in him crucified a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope, and the assurance of sin forgiven, and the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.